We're here with Paula Nadelstern at Fall Quilt Market 2012 in Houston, Texas, and she is going to walk us through the Fabrica Stand Gallery. Okay, so the first quilt, quilt number one, now all of the quilts are 36 inches square, that was the parameter that each person was asked to fulfill. Um, and this first quilt, South Hall Safari, is made by Judy Donius from um, Forest Hills, New York. Judy Donius is a teacher at the um, City Quilter, the premier quilt show, quilt store in New York City. And she made a quilt as you go log cabin quilt. She used every single fabric in the Fabrica stand um, and Extreme Colors collection once. And she's, she's done some really nice machine quilting on that. What I really love about this quilt, I think that's so unusual, um, particularly, is how Judy used like a little asymmetry there. It's a very symmetrical quilt. And yet, yet the poopy green extreme color stripe that goes that way makes it look so different from using the black and white in the other direction. So that your eye isn't really sure what it is that it's seeing at first because really it's, a, it's exactly the same, um, same on, on paper. The diagram would look the same. Here's quilt number two by um, Beth Carney from Yonkers, New York, um, an art quilter who has been in Quilt National many times. And she used the technique that she usually does with her own hand dyes that are just very beautiful and very fluid. And there's a quilt it's called the skinny because she's put together long strips of the same fabric. Your eye doesn't see where all the seams are connecting it. And then every so often, just like she ended up you know, inserting a little bit. I watched her make this, and it was a real. Um, a real conceptual kind of idea on a design wall, seeing how thin she wanted some of the lines and where she wanted the pieces very specifically. She also did a great job of machine quilting, just going up and down and up and down. So there's a lot of dense quilting on that particular, on this particular quilt. I made the third quilt called Stars in the Window. And it's using um, a fabric that is big, the big stars. I put, was able to put a piece of it on the back. So, um, but this is using it, the quilt uses that fabric called Christmas stars in four different colorways. And I just cut um, portions, so you're peeking through. And sometimes, in this case, they lined up to each other. But I did this also in a design wall, just placing these around. I mean, very specifically, this had to be that size, this had to be that size to fit into this column. And then I used the scroll to, to be my lattice, fitting it together. And particularly liked, it was a big surprise to me that I was able to use a piece of this really gorgeous um, a paisley fabric to be the, the border outside. Some quilts need a border, some do not. But I really liked that um, being able to use the, a border that was so complex on a quilt that was so simple. Pyramids of Fabrikistan is a traditional pyramid quilt. So you can just see the rows of pyramids, of triangles. So they're 60 degree triangles going up and down. And where the kaleidoscope fits together in the 60 degrees, your eye sees the kaleidoscope. And otherwise, there is background, which I use with many of the different colors of the scroll. Kind of the bright ones are on the inside, the filler, and then this black and white goes around the outside. Then I went back to the, um, I went back to this pattern, the Christmas star, cut some of these out of the Christmas star, so you get this nice continuous pattern that's a surprise as we go around. And then the last thing, because it came a little small and I was needing to add a border, was to take a piece of the fabric called the E-Cat um, and just, just pieced it into the center so there's, there's just a few inches of it, but not in every corner, just in the two corners so that your eye is, is moving really across the entire quilt to, the, um, to, to find it, it's, it's the similarity on the other side. Um, so now we're going, moving over here to quilt number five. This was made by Catherine Nauer in a rather intuitive way. She didn't actually draw out the pattern. She started in the center and doing a, um, a nice medallion, playing a lot with the ECAT pattern that is bringing the eye out from the circle um, in really interesting ways. And the same thing here using the ECAT fabric. Then this next uh, one is by Vicki Welsh from Virginia. 
And this is a great quilt. What's wonderful about it is that this is the exact same simple star over and over again, and yet Vicky was able to, by camouflaging the seams and playing with what lands at the seams, she's making such completely different effects each time. Every time I come over, I see something different, you know. This is one of those quilts that looks so different from up close and far away. Because here you have, like, here your eye is brought around into a circle. Here, here the center is just spurting out because the lines are going that way. So you could learn an awful lot. And then I think she intended to use one piece of fabric going across the border. But actually, I think these are, like, um, two by three inch pieces, just different portions of different fabric creating this really elaborate, visually active border that um, I'm, I'm really personally very impressed with and think I'll probably create something like that sometime. Um, and now we have um, a Ruth Mary shower, shower. I apologize if I did not um, say that correctly. Um, Ruth Mary works at CNT Publishing. She's actually my rep, and we constantly communicate when I need to order. And when I was telling her about this project, she offered to make a quilt and made this fabulous um, Disappearing Nine Star, which is such an easy quilt to, to make. And yet, what I think is so excellent about this is the quilting, how she's really got these little uh, squares popping out and the um, black background retreating because it's really well done. Um, quilting. She uses a, she, she quilts on a long arm. She said she actually could have put more of the pattern in because she had leftovers, but felt it needed this background. And it's a great use of the black on black piece of extreme um, colors. And the last quilt, quilt number eight, is called Seeking Polaris by Kat Nix from um, Missouri. And she is, is a kaleidoscope person, and she's she's done some fabulous um, sequins and, and beads, and really has had a very good time. And her back is really nice. I'm put this down for a minute, and she really made a great back. I'm very proud of these good friends who put in so much time. For me, it's, I'm very appreciative. I know um, everyone's very, very busy, and I'm really delighted with the way this really looks like an art gallery. Thank you, Paula.